Because Walt Disney World alone welcomes over 19 million guests every single year, it's obvious that the Walt Disney Company uses a ton of natural resources and really needs to find ways to cut down on their carbon footprint. Luckily for us and for our planet, they have implemented a lot of different things that they do in order to reduce that carbon footprint and make for a happier, healthier planet. Today I'm going to tell you about 10 things the Walt Disney Company is doing to reduce the size of their carbon footprint and save the planet. A lot of these things are things that they were doing during my cast member days, but others are new because Disney is always trying to find new ways to be good environmental stewards. The first thing they do, I'm sure you know about if you've visited Animal Kingdom, and that is the Disney Conservation Fund. When you visit Animal Kingdom at all of the registers throughout the park, they have little buttons like you have your I'm celebrating button, but these buttons have an endangered animal on them and they say Disney Conservation Fund. To get one of these buttons, you have to make a donation amounting to at least $1 and Disney will match your donation and put it towards the Disney Conservation Fund. Each and every year they do different projects with these funds to preserve the planet. You can find out more information on that on their Facebook page, which I will link in the description down below. One of the most recent changes that Disney has made to save the planet is the ban on plastic straws. The ban went into full effect over the weekend and it has been a very controversial issue. By cutting out the use of plastic straws, Disney is going to save 175 million straws every single year. Instead of receiving a plastic straw with your beverage, you will instead use a paper straw. Disney has always had paper straws in Animal Kingdom because the plastic straws weren't good for the animals if they were to end up blowing into the safari, but now it will be a resort-wide policy. If you are not a fan of the paper straws, I highly recommend you get a reusable straw from Amazon or any local retailer and bring that with you to the parks. While we're on the topic of paper straws, Disney has some rules for their paper goods. As a company, Disney has committed to not using any paper fibers from undesirable sources. So they won't use any illegally harvested wood and they also won't use wood that came from high value conservation land. So this is things like old trees that need to be preserved and conservation land in general. There are a lot of other things that they consider to be undesirable, but I'm going to leave that full PDF that they have laid out for their paper policy in the description if you would like to check it out. The next thing they are doing is minimizing the need for paper. So in their day-to-day -day operations, they're cutting out paper wherever they can. So paper fast passes, they've switched over to digital at Walt Disney World, and that cuts down on a ton of paper every year. If they do have to use paper for something, they make sure that it can be easily recycled throughout the parks and in their corporate offices. The next thing that they are doing has to do with Disney's brand new cruise ships that are coming in the next couple years. So they're currently building two ships which will use over 80,000 lights apiece. All of these lights will be fluorescent or LED to cut down on the amount of emissions. The emission of greenhouse gases will be reduced by over 25% in these new ships compared to the current ships that are in the water today. Overall, the company has reduced their emissions by 44% as of 2018, and they'll hit 50% by 2020. The Walt Disney Company also uses alternative fuel wherever they can. So the steam train in Disneyland actually runs on used cooking oil. In 2009, Disney created the Climate Solution Fund. At the end of every year, every line of business deducts their environmental impact from their bottom line. So it creates a financial incentive for the different lines of business to be more green. The money that's deducted goes into the Disney Climate Solution Fund and is used for research and to implement new ways to save the planet. Since 2009, over $35.5 million has gone into this fund and used for research and development purposes. One of the other ways that Disney likes to have a positive impact on the planet is they like to educate. So when Finding Nemo came out all those years ago, there was a huge influx in sales for the blue tang fish and the clownfish because that's Nemo, Dory, and Marlin. So when Finding Dory was coming out, they knew that there was probably going to be a similar surge in sales. I'm going to attach the infographic that they put out, but they made these coloring books for kids that taught them about choosing the right fish for a pet and what the fish actually need to make sure that people were treating these fish humanely and not purchasing a fish that they really couldn't take care of. Because you can't treat a clownfish or a blue tang like you can a goldfish. So just taking the extra steps to educate based on what they knew was going to happen when they released a new movie was a great way for them to 
kind of educate and make an impact at the same time. The last thing that I'm going to tell you about today is their brand new 270 acre 50 megawatt solar facility. It just opened and there's actually a video that you can check out, I'll leave it linked down below, that kind of shows you the behind the scenes. But this solar facility is going to generate enough renewable energy to power two of the Orlando theme parks. That's insane. So as you can see, even though the Walt Disney Company does use a crazy amount of energy each and every year, they are taking steps to save the planet. Let me know in the comments down below which way you found to be the most interesting. I think my favorite is probably the new solar facility because I just think that's so cool, but I also really like the cruise ships. So let me know what you thought down below. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys again on Thursday. Bye!